Okay, here's a little extra help on 9-3. The first part, this, I guess this is 9-3a, rational functions in their graphs. We've got to be able to locate all the asymptotes before we can sketch the graph. So the first half of the lesson was all the factoring and locating the asymptotes, and then the second part will be trying to sketch the graph. Here are some little pointers. Remember, any point of discontinuity where you have to pick up the pencil when you're graphing the function, it happens at any zero of the denominator. Then that could be a vertical asymptote, or it could be a whole. A whole is a common zero where both the numerator and the denominator are zero, like what will happen right here. And also we have to figure out if there's a horizontal asymptote. We analyze the degree of each polynomial. If the denominator is greater than y equals zero, the x-axis will be an asymptote. If the degrees are equal, we look at the leading coefficients to find the asymptote. But if the degree of the numerator is greater, there's none. So this one right here is number 13. The instructions were to describe the vertical asymptotes and or holes. You've got to find the zeros of both the top and the bottom. So for the numerator, the zeros are at negative 3. This is the zero product property. The zeros are at negative 3 and at positive 2. The denominator, they're at positive 2 and negative 1. And this is what I said a second ago. You see how both the zeros on the top and the bottom happen at 2? So that means there is a hole in the graph at x equals 2. And then whatever is left on the bottom is a point of discontinuity. Since it's not a hole, we know this has to be a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. A lot of students say, well, what do you do with the negative 3? Well, nothing in this case. It just makes the function 0, but it does not become a point of discontinuity. It actually is an x-intercept. Okay. Now we have to do the same thing with number 18, but we have to use our magic x with dividing by the leading coefficient trick twice to factor the top and the bottom. So let's go ahead and run through this. 6x squared plus x minus 2, 1 minus 12. Remember, I got the bottom down here by 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. This looks to be plus 4 and minus 3. Okay? Whenever you have a leading coefficient greater than 1, you divide your factors by that leading coefficient and reduce these two fractions. This will reduce down to plus 2 over 3, and this one to minus 1 over 2. And then you make your binomials 3x plus 2 and 2x minus 1 equals zero. Zero product property on these two binomials to find out what the zeros are. They're at negative two over three and positive one half. And we gotta do the same thing over here. Three x squared plus seventeen x plus ten. Magic x seventeen and thirty. This thinks to be plus fifteen plus two. Divide that by three. And then reduce this one. This one won't reduce. Reduce this one down to plus 5 over 1. So we've got x plus 5 for one binomial. And the other is 3x plus 2. And then zero power property says, what are the zeros? This one's at negative 5. This one's at negative 2 over 3. So let's write down the same thing we did here. What are the zeros of the numerator? Negative 2 over 3 and 1 half. And what are the zeros of the denominator? negative 5 and negative 2 over 3. Aha! We've got a common 0. So for this graph, there is a hole at x equals negative 2 over 3. And the other thing, the point of discontinuity is 0 of the denominator. There is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 5.